Hi, Annie Painter again with part two of video five, Making Color Wheels and Understanding Color Theory. My great inspiration for the very simple things I'm going to show you comes from probably one of the most important color theorists who ever lived and worked, Johannes Itten. He died in 1967, but before he did that, he distinguished himself with um, a color theory book called The Art of Color. Let me just leaf through it so you can see just how sophisticated his work is. In understanding color, it was used for designers, for educators. He helps us understand how to see how artists use color for special effects, to create meaning, to create mood all the wonderful visual and optical effects that can be controlled by the artist. Well, of course, this is way more sophisticated than the work I do with children, families, and myself. So I took some inspiration and adapted a few things from Johannes Sitten to show you, and we are loving using color theory shapes with our color wheel. And of course, there are many color wheels, but with our color wheel, it works great, and you can choose great combinations for your paintings, for your collages. And at the end of this video, stay tuned because we're going to show you some artwork from students, and you can see how they made these choices and tried combinations they never thought they could. Johanna Sitton said something I love. He points out that a few of you out there are really intuitive and you don't need tricks of the trade about color. You just have a spirit, you understand how to make color say what you want it to say. Your work is amazing and beautiful no matter what, but the rest of us benefit from instruction. If that's you and you are a beginner, I'll let me show you how this works. So. Let's say you're trying to do a collage, or maybe you're doing a painting and you want a special mood, you want it to be very vibrant and very exciting. One of the ways that you might do it would be to take a equal, an equilateral triangle. And this is a triangle equal on all three sides. And if you put those points on your color wheel anywhere, you will get these very far apart, very high contrast colors. And these to me are like Mardi Gras or Carnival or a party. They are so far apart. So your color combination might be orange, violet, and green. For example, this is what that would look like. And I have sets of these so kids can try these out and see, well, what, what if I made an amazing mask? And most of my mask was green and violet but I gave it a little punch with this orange. That would be an example of three points on an equilateral triangle. Another beautiful combination for maybe a little more peaceful, a little more harmonious, is analogous. And you remember, analogous colors are any three that are adjacent or next to each other on the wheel. So that would be magenta, red, orange, and orange. Moving it around, it could be these three these darker blues and purples, the cyan or blue and the greens. Or these. And here's an example of an, an analogous set. Let's see what I've got here. OK, I've got these three, magenta, red, orange, and orange. Now those are just a vibrant, almost tropical sort of look, aren't they? That's analogous. A third combination, and I understand this is a combination that Impressionists like to use. You can check it out with your favorite Impressionist paintings. These are, uh, color theory shape is a rectangle, and it would be any four points on the rectangle. So you would be choosing the blue violets, red violets, accenting those with the yellow oranges and yellow greens. But let's turn it another way and see what we get red orange, yellow orange, and then across the color wheel, blue green and blue violet. And here, we have two secondaries and two primaries. That bright, wonderful magenta and the cyan with the accents of orange and green, that would be four points on a rectangle. And here's a sample. Yellow green, yellow orange, red, violet, 
and blue violet. This would be your palette for using four points on a rectangle. And that's actually called a tetrad because it has four points. That would be a tetrad. Oh, and here's one of my very favorites. I have two samples for you because I'm partial to the split complement. Remember that any time you have colors across from each other on the color wheel, it's called a complement. And that's how you remember in lesson four, we mixed neutrals, grays, browns, tans by mixing those colors opposite from each other. But a split complement uses colors across from each other, but splits it so that instead of having magenta at that end, we keep the green and we split and use the colors on either side of magenta. Or we take, let's say we go here, and we would have cyan with red orange and yellow orange. Or let's say we took the green, the blue green, and we would have magenta, orange, and blue green. That would be a split complement. Let me see if I can show you a split complement. Yellow, our complement would be violet, but we split it so we have red violet and the blue violet or blue. And that's the co combination we would have to work with. Split complement. Now here's another tetrad on four points of a square. And this one is fun to use as well. Look what happens. Okay, Wherever those four points touch, that would be the combination you're going to give a try. So we have one primary, the cyan. We have its opposite, orange. We have red violet and its opposite, yellow green. Let's see what I have here to show you. That's Let's see, I have yellow green, cyan, I have it slipping away here, yellow green, cyan, red, violet, and orange. That's your set that you'd be using with a tetrad of four points on a square. Now, these are not difficult for you to make. We're going to make sure that you can see those on the video and you'll have the names of them and I'll also have a template on the uh, website that you can download, but you can really adapt them depending on whatever size your um, color wheel ends up. You can adapt them pretty easily yourself. Let's see if I have any more to show you. I think that's it. So if you have a tiny color wheel, I also have the template that will fit the eight and a half by 11 and I'll make sure that that's on the, color, on the website as well and you can have even student sets so that they can all have one of their own in their desk for any color, any color work that they like to do. And why bother? The whole idea is that if you're really an artist and you have a wonderful idea and you want to make a mood or you want to give meaning or you want to express something that's important to you, and you say, that forest was just so lovely and so gentle. And when I took my walk, and it's true, I took my walk recently with my dogs and the light was streaming through and there were all these beautiful greens and it seemed like it was just a magical place here. And I thought, you know, if I were going to make a painting of that, I'd want it to be right in here. I'd want that beautiful light and the different kinds of greens. And so I would say, I think I need an analogous palette to have that happen. But you know, the fun part of it is, in the projects I'm going to show you in the next videos, I'm going to show you a cut paper mask, a beautiful flower project, a way to use those paint chips for beautiful paintings, and you can experiment. And you don't even have to know the mood in advance. You can just go and try these shapes out and say, what if I try this? What if I try that? And when you're done, you can see these amazing moods. So all of our students, um, I would say kindergarten through adult, have woken up and said, wow, I didn't even know I could do that well, because they had just a little bit of skill about choosing and using color. Enjoy color, and now enjoy the beautiful samples from my students.